Good morning, Luther grads. It's wonderful to see you again. We've really missed having you around our campus. Welcome to your graduation ceremonies. You know, these facilities just seem like empty buildings when you guys aren't here. But uh, when you are here, it really does feel like a school community. So we, we've missed that so much uh, with you. So we thought maybe to celebrate your graduation together, we'd take you down a, a little bit of a memory lane and take you by some places and some people that uh, maybe uh, matter to you and that uh, bring back great memories of your four years, 3.6 years on Luther campus. So uh, come along and let's, uh, let's get ready for your graduation. But before we do, most awesome grad gift ever. Excellent, let's go. First stop, new classroom wing. Congratulations. 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 Isn't it nice to see the history people reading? And uh, you'll probably recognize that as Skip Chapel Route. Route number one, probably. Come on up the stairs. Mr. Wilmot, do you have that uh, extra wide lens on to get my uh, biceps and shoulders in? Yeah, okay, great. And here we come down the classroom wing. Woo, hey guys, congratulations. Over here, you'll see the library. I know some of you have been looking for it for four years, but that's where it is. <laughs> congratulations. And over on the left, the elevator for days you're feeling down and need a lift. Oh, what and here's a special hallway filled with hooligans and delinquents. Uh, I think they run a casino out of their office, but we'll find out. Wow, Gregory looking great <laughs> with that vest. Oh, with the mask on, nice touch. <laughs> down there, your old classroom. Right. And, oh, there's something special going on here. I'm not sure what. Oh, sugar. <laughs> she has you on I need one. We're okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the professors du français struggle with putting the sentence together, right? Yeah. Please. Please. The language. <laughs> As I say, we hope that you're all, you're all doing very well and we hope that we're going to do as much as we can today for you to help celebrate this very significant milestone in your life, which is of course your grade 12 graduation. So everybody's here today dressed up because they want to send you off with the best possible wishes. All right, we're going to go down here. That's all right, who are we missing? Hi. You can say hi. 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 And then we'll go from the blue room into the girls' dorm a bit. Over here we have a nurse's office. Uh, not too many schools that can say they have an official administration approved drug dealer on campus, but we do for good reasons. And we'll go down here. Grade 12 international uh, students and, and, some, and some Canadian students. You'll recognize the girls' dorm here. It's been your home for for several years. And then this brings us into the uh, student lounge and uh, where lots of activities go on and we have some dorm staff over there playing pool. You're supposed to use cues guys. Yes. <laughs> remember, remember in movies it's all about the cues. Right? Yes. Yeah, come on. Yeah. ESL offices, many of you have had many, many great classes and learning a second language and uh, probably brings back great memories of uh, your first few years at Luther College. All right, we're gonna go down this hallway towards the cafeteria now. Here's, uh, here's your ESL staff who are here to say hi. Congratulations. I'm ready. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Mr. Smith in the suit, looking great. Yeah. Oh, Madame Schroeder, what, what do we have going there? Congratulations, 
and jubilations. I can't believe you're graduating from the school. That was well done. Nice. <laughs> just, just be thankful it was her singing and not me. <laughs> All right. Maintenance offices. Mr. Dixon, who's retiring. Kyle, thanks for all your work. Congratulations. Yeah. And then we come into one of the hubs of the school, the cafeteria. And I, I want to pause here for a moment because they often say that sharing a meal together is what communities and families do. And I know that for many of you, this was a gathering place where you shared meals with each other, tried to do homework while you were eating, tried to cram into the spaces so you could, so you could eat things we can't do during COVID-19, obviously, but often considered one of the nerve centers of the school. And for, for you dorm students, a place where you were having three meals a day for 200 days a year. So I'm sure it brings back warm memories for, uh, for many of you. Let's keep going. Highest point in the Rockies, right there. Yeah. And some of the people who were cooking the great food for you, Conley, Teresa, we want to uh, wish you well and say uh, keep in touch and come back and visit. And then we come up the ramp here. All the play structures in all the world, and it seems that every kid that's ever come to school has wanted to play on this more than anything ever. Mr. Steve and I have office chair races down here after hours, but don't tell him I told you. Looks like we got some shenanigans going on up here. Let's see what they're doing. Oh, nice one! We got a crack for DNA. This is gonna be the one. This is gonna be the one. Oh my gosh. Oh, nice. Oh, yes, I think we... Oh, wow. not again. Um, yeah. Hi. Mark, Hi. we're yes. so close to a vaccine. <laughs> That's what you're gambling with. Solving oh, nice. yeah. the pandemic here. Nice. Maybe chocolate cake is a vaccine. Oh, oh chocolate cake? Sure. Mm. 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 Which only goes to show mm. you can have your cake and eat it too. Happy graduation! And here we come into the student commons, and while we're looking at this particular group over here, it seems to be trying to escape to the parking lot. Faster, faster, we faster, faster, this faster, is another faster, one of the faster. North Centers of the School. Congratulations! Congratulations! We'll miss you. That's, that's, that's awesome. Poor Mr. Becker. It's a good workout for him. This is uh, one of the favorite places in the school for the students. It's one of the... You, you are the first students to have a space entirely dedicated to uh, socializing and to hanging out in groups. And this is where a lot of community was built. It's also the place where I would hear phrases like, oh, that was due today, or Josh and Akash, oh my gosh. I uh, have that phrase go through my head more often than you <laughs> would think. Because of the rhyme, because of the rhyme. Let's go this way. No, you just think that you don't do this. See how much fun pandemic isolation can be? <laughs> Come on! And this brings us to one of the centerpiece facilities uh, in the school, our, one of our most recent buildings, and of course the home of LIT and LIVT and many wonderful memories of our community here. So we want to make sure that you get a, a, a good view of this. I know it's one of the uh, places that you've been missing. Here's the fabulous mural that Mr. Brighton and Mr. Casper put together and uh, some more faculty and staff that would like to uh, wish you well and say, and say goodbye. We are very proud of you. Congratulations. Nice. Congrats. All the best. Bye-bye. There you go. Through this way. All right. I want to stop here for a second because it seems to me this is one of the symbolic junctures of the school, the intersections of the school. From here, you can see to all the facets of a well-rounded education. Back in the simple, athletics and physical wellness. Through those doors, fine arts and cultural. Through that door where we gathered for chapel and, and built community. 
through those doors, SRC and Student Commons and a place for you to socialize and relax with each other. And through those far doors, the, of course, the academics. And then that way, up and to the left, the dorms, uh, the internationalism of the school. Think of how many events have required you to pass through this, this junction here in the school. And I think if there's a symbolic place for us to gather and think about what your experience at Luther College has been like, it's, it's this place right here. It's also an important junction because this is where you would line up for your graduation ceremony to process into the Belcher. So let's go, let's go do that now and uh, take you to your graduation for 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. Good job. We're proud of you and we'll miss you. All the best. Your grad coordinators, um, Mrs. Fink and Mrs. Smoliak, who have done an unbelievable amount of work to make today happen. Graduates of 2020, just before we go into your graduation ceremony, I want to thank Ms. Wilkinson and Mr. Steve for all the extra work they've done to administrate a school for the last three months while we've been operating remotely. So once again, congratulations. Let's go and celebrate your graduation together. Well done, graduates. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. Luther College High School is located on Treaty 4 land, the original lands of the Cree, Soto, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. For Luther College, this land acknowledgement is a recognition of the shared histories of Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples on this land, and a reflection of our commitment to the continuing act of reconciliation needed for our shared future together. Please join me in the invocation prayer. Gracious God, by your great power and wisdom you created all things. By the gift of your Son you offered us new hope. By the breath of your sacred spirit you continue to inspire and empower us. We invite and acknowledge your presence on this special day as we celebrate the achievements and aspirations of the young men and women of the class of 2020. As we celebrate this day of graduation, it is with thanksgiving for your many gifts. We thank you for our families, for our teachers and staff members, for alumni and friends of Luther College. But above all, we thank you for each person graduating today and for all the ways they met the challenges and opportunities of high school with dedication, determination, curiosity, and creativity. We ask that as they set forth into their adult education and careers, that you continue to form them into Christ-like people of compassion and love. Grant, O oh Lord, that wherever their journey takes them, they may grow with inner strength and courage, learning the ways of compassion and consideration, that they might embrace the sick with healing, that they will comfort the oppressed with justice, that they take only what they need from the earth, that they seek to be servants in the cause of peace. 
Saturate them with your strength, creativity, wisdom, and love. As we gather on this special day, this is our prayer to you, our Creator, Savior, and Comforter. Amen. Good morning. I would like to introduce to you today Mr. Evan Whitestar, the Student Support Assistant at Mother Teresa Middle School. Mr. Whitestar will be performing a traditional Indigenous honour song for our graduating class of 2020. Mr. Whitestar is the uncle of graduating student Ashante Mackenzie Missens, and he has performed this honour song for our Luther College community before, but due to the uh, restrictions of the pandemic, Mr. Whitestar will be performing solo today. As part of the cultural protocol, I am inviting our scholarship support coordinator, Ms. Jessica Paltz, to present our guest with the gift of tobacco on behalf of Luther College. The gift of tobacco is part of the traditional covenant when we ask for the gift of the drum. The drum comes from the hide of a deer and the tobacco is giving thanks for the deer that was a gift from the Creator. Mr. Whitestar is receiving the gift of life from the Creator through the tobacco by carrying the drum and representing the hide. We give thanks to Mr. Whitestar for sharing this honor song with us today and for blessing the graduates of 2020. Our scripture reading for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand, and it shines on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see your good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. We continue with the scripture dialogue from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. 
Give thanks to the God of all gods. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the Lord of all lords. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the only one who makes great wonders. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the one who made the skies with skill. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the one who shaped the earth on the water. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the one who made the great lights. God's faithful love lasts forever. The sun to rule the day. God's faithful love lasts forever. The moon and the stars to rule the night. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. God's faithful love lasts forever. Good morning. Welcome to your virtual graduation ceremonies. Who would have thought those three words, virtual, graduation, and ceremonies, would ever be put together as they are being here? We are living in interesting times, as Confucius said, but I'll come back to that later. My name is Brian Hillis, and I am very proud and honoured to be the current president of Luther College, both its high school and university campus. We are very happy that Evan Whitestar and the uh, from Mother Teresa Middle School was here to perform this morning. If I may say, Evan, your dedication to helping us understand Indigenous traditional ways is so appreciated here at Luther College. I know I've had the opportunity to participate in one of your sessions and I learned so much. Thank you for being a part of the Luther College community and for your drum tribute and honour song here today. We are very, very grateful for that. We are gathered here today for a very happy occasion to recognize the hard work, perseverance, and intelligence of our graduates. We are happy that you are, that you are able to tune in to allow us to celebrate with you and honor you through this, albeit, virtual ceremony. And at this point, like a good public speaker should, I should probably try to bring in a joke or two. But even there, all the jokes seem to be pandemic related these days, don't you? Like the one that I enjoyed the most was, if you thought you needed 144 rolls of toilet paper for a 14-day quarantine, you probably should have seen a doctor long before the pandemic. But you know I'm really bad at stand-up comedy, and it's especially difficult when nobody's here to laugh. So rest easy that I'm not going to make any more jokes. Can't promise that about Dr. Anderson, but there you go. At this point in the ceremony, I would normally introduce you to our front row guests, which includes board members, faculty, special guests, but today I don't even get to do that, and I'm sure that's one of the least of your disappointments with the way your grad, like everything else, is so affected by this pandemic. But there was a point in introducing those people. Regents from the board who govern the college, faculty who have taught you, staff who have provided so much of the behind the scenes work, and probably a special guest or two who is an alum who has made yet another important gift to the college. Those introductions showed how much more Luther College is than just what you see on a day-to-day -day basis. As important as the faculty and staff are that you see, there is so much more to this community that has been offering quality education in a Christian context for over 107 years. The next group of people I would normally introduce, or better thank today, are your parents. And fortunately, we can still do that because chances are they're there with you watching this. They so deserve to be thanked. Let's face it, for many of you, Luther College was not your first choice in coming out of grade eight or from other countries. Your friends were going elsewhere. The other schools were bigger. More importantly, they didn't have a dress code and it all seemed easier going elsewhere. It would have been easier in so many ways for them too financially for your parents to send you elsewhere, but they encouraged you to attend here. They knew what was best for you and they persevered. Let's give them a round, a virtual round of applause for their foresight, perseverance, and wisdom in sending you to this great institution. My most pleasant task here this morning is to address you, the graduates. It is my very real pleasure to do that, but it's also true that addressing you without talking about the pandemic seems somehow dishonest. So like any educator worth their salt, I should ask what lessons might we learn from this pandemic? And more specifically, might, what lessons might we learn from this pandemic for you as graduates? I'd like to look back to the namesake of our college, Martin Luther, who himself lived through a re-emergence of the Black Death. The Black Death, which 200 years before his time had wiped out almost half the population of Europe. 
Luther was forced to think about this question of what to do in the re-emerging pandemic. So let's see what he said. But first, let's remember that he was very much still a medieval man. He was of the opinion, quote, that all the academics, like any plague, are spread among the people by evil spirits who poison the air or exhale a pestilential breath which puts a deadly poison into the flesh, end of quote. At the time, the options he was considering were to either stay home and die waiting for God's wrath to fall upon him, as he said, which is what I hope you're not doing in the, lo in the lockdown, or run to a place where supposedly and hopefully the plague didn't exist. Interestingly, Luther thought either option was reasonable and goes on to justify them, though his favorite was to stay home and not wait for God's wrath, but to serve others around him. What can be learned from this? Well, Luther's is a strange way of looking at the world, it seems. And remember, I say this as being one of his biggest fans. But the most obvious thing, it seems to me, is that context really does matter. Luther didn't have the benefit of modern science, which, while it hasn't figured out the current coronavirus yet, is working on it. And so we are not resorting to an argument about evil spirits poisoning the air, as close as that ironically comes to the truth of what the coronavirus is. Luther also didn't have the context of hospitals or other social services or internet or electronic means. It was either stay and die or leave. Context really does matter. So what is our context for you today as graduates? To celebrate you and your accomplishments. To celebrate you, your schoolmates and your teachers who kept up the learning environment to the very end, not as we had hoped in person, but as they could and as they did so well. Celebration of this remarkable rite of passage called graduation, which, who are we kidding, is not what we had hoped it to be. But we know that people like your principal, Ms. Fink, Ms. Simoliak, have worked so very, very hard to make it as good an event as it possibly can. And we need to thank especially Ms. Fink and Ms. Simoliak for their great efforts. Thank you, Ms. Fink. Thank you, Ms. Simoliak. Furthermore, this pandemic has made you graduates what I predict will be the most successful classes this college has ever produced. Why? You will be more resilient. You will be more aware of all the importance of all the things we value so much and only came to realize just how important they were during this pandemic. For instance, because of this pandemic, you know that things like community, like just being with one another, like sharing a smile, a laugh, a tease, a story, are also important. You have acquired that wisdom from this time that my generation didn't have in, in this country. In this context, we celebrate you and what you have learned from this pandemic and what you have learned from this education. Celebrate as you can, even if physically distant with your friends. If you will allow me a personal note of reflection at this point to make yet another point. Today is also my graduation date of sorts. It is more or less my last day of work. I have a few more things to do on Monday and Tuesday, but frankly, not, not a lot. As I, reflect, as I reflect back on what I have learned, and dare I say what you have learned, not just from this pandemic, from what you have accomplished at this school, you have learned a lot. We have learned what we call in the Lutheran context the importance of vocation. Vocation means literally to be called out. Through this pandemic, we were shut in. Difficult to be called out. We were forced to stay in our own houses, and we realized how important it was to be out to be with others, and yes, even more importantly, to be called out to serve, as vocation implies. For the past 30 years, I have been fortunate enough to be called out to serve Luther College as a professor, a dean, and then president. You too were called out to serve Luther College as its students, to be with one another, to learn from one another, to learn from your faculty, to socialize, and now finally to celebrate. Your service of education, your vocation of education as a student is no less a vocation than mine is as an administrator. And yet it was a vocation these last few months seemed somewhat denied. As you learned with your online learning, it was never fully denied. Even more importantly, and I really want to thank you at this point, were your monumental efforts at staying connected, at realizing and continuing your vocation as students of Luther College by being connected. 
Let me take this opportunity to thank all of you who worked at the LC Nights, the Film Nights, the Talent Night, the LGN Videos, the various virtual chapels, and in so many other ways, the SRC elections, so many other ways I don't even know about. You were fulfilling your vocation as students in serving, in serving and in being with one another as best you could. The pandemic could not deny you that vacation. And I can't tell you how proud I am to be associated with this school than when I saw those videos and those efforts to reach out to one another. You gave so many of us hope that there is still humaneness and kindness and, and aspiring to be something and being inspired. And that was part of your vocation as students. Again, I recall the namesake of our college, Martin Luther, was adamant that every person had a vocation and that their vocation really did make a difference in the world and in how they served. I would ask that you remember that you will have a vocation beyond Luther College also. And I say that not just because you are graduates of Luther College, but now you are alumni. The terms alumnus for uh, males, for alumni, alumna for females stem from the Latin alaire, to nourish or to be nourished. It's no accident that there is this double reference in the, in the root word. You have been nourished in so many ways here at Luther, starting with your academic program, then your social, athletic, musical, and so many other co-curricular activities. You have made friends, learned lessons, and grown so much. You truly have been nourished in so many ways. Now you are alumni, and we hope that you will continue to grow, and yes, continue to be part of this nourishing community as people who nourish now. That community includes your fellow students. Stay in touch, not just with the faculty and staff and the college, but with your fellow students. Remain a part of our community by doing that. We need you as active alumni. Your fellow classmates need you. Stay in touch. Be a proud Luther alum. Finally, as you go out as alumni of Luther College, let me say that we are confident that you will be successful because you have received, frankly, a superior education that has given you those tools to be successful. But remember what it means to be successful. Remember what you were taught in chapel, in, in your classes here, by the living example of your faculty and staff. Remember, success is not about chasing the almighty dollar, or the pursuit of fame and glory, or the manipulation that results in power. Remember what you have learned from this school, and for that matter, through this pandemic, and what was always our message here, how important it is to be in community how truly fulfilled you are when you were called out in your vocation as students, not locked down, and how serving others should always be part of your vocation, as it was at Luther College, even during this pandemic. Thank you for being our graduates, for being now our alumni. We are very proud of you. We will be following you closely, not only as Luther College alumni, but as fellow children of God, as ones called out to serve. Thank you, and God bless.
Education requires the investment of an entire community, so a culminating event such as GRAD is a natural time to pause and express gratitude to those who have helped to make today possible. First, as Dr. Hill has said, we should give thanks for your families, but especially your parents, who supported and loved you unconditionally through both the highs and lows of your education, and who drove over here daily with whatever you had forgotten. Then here at Luther College, there were the cafeteria, maintenance and dorm staffs, and the admissions, finance and alumni offices, who often in unseen and thankless ways worked hard to support your Luther experience. And then there were your teachers, past and present, who believed in and worked so hard for you and for quality education in a Christian context. Some of them, like you, won't be amongst us on a daily basis next year. So it is with competing emotions, but primarily with gratitude, that we say farewell and God's blessings to tremendous servants of Luther College. Brian Hillis, Mary Gorell, Paul Dixon, Cynthia Payson Wall, Tanner Brightman. We wish them joy, health and peace during their well-earned retirements and their new pursuits. Each has enhanced our community greatly. There is one final group that warrants special appreciation this morning. Grad is an enormous undertaking even in the most routine of years, but one which required exponentially more organizational work this year due to the restrictions that we're all too familiar with. While today isn't fully what any of us were hoping for, it is remarkable to me what has been achieved. First, I thank today's participants, including Pastor Hendrickson, Mr. White Star, Dr. Hillis, Mr. Seufer, Ms. Wilkinson, Mr. Steeb, and Madame Andrews, and of course, our wonderful students. Our community is blessed with such talented students. And I simply cannot adequately thank enough our front office staff, Jacqueline Warner, Lindsay Halbrick, Wendy, Wendy Sauer, and faculty, Jay Wilmont, Brittany Smoliak, and Shannon Fink for their exceptional work in pulling together this morning, arranging the drive-by this afternoon, and coordinating Monday's diploma pickup. They each put in a staggering number of hours. They modeled for all of us that living with servant hearts can ameliorate even the most disruptive and unusual circumstances. Wherever you are in the world, I want to hear you standing up, and I hope you'll join me in a standing ovation and an expression of thanks for these people and the remarkable work that they have done. One of the most prestigious academic recognitions a graduate can receive is that of serving as class valedictorian. This significant honor is bestowed on a student who is an articulate and perceptive speaker and who more often than not has earned the highest graduating average in his or her class. This year's recipient certainly meets those criteria and more. Your 2020 valedictorian not only achieved an astounding 94.5% average in grade 12, but did so as a full IB diploma student. Like a true Renaissance man, he not only excelled athletically in basketball and soccer, but also with partner Jasner and coach Ms. Greenman, won the provincial debate competition, participated in nationals, and was set to travel to Oxford for the World Debate Tournament until COVID forced its cancellation. Turns out he'll be going to Oxford anyway. He doesn't know it yet, but the entire English department is sitting at home with a rubric ready to assess his speech this morning. They may as well write down 100% right now. It is my distinct privilege to congratulate and welcome to our graduation ceremony the remarkably talented 2020 class valedictorian Mr. Josh Seufer. Well, we made it. I'd like to, of course, begin by acknowledging that we are currently on Treaty 4 land. I also want to recognize that 
While I was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to give this speech today, our student body has a number of amazing students that I've been lucky enough to call friends over the past few years, all of which were equally qualified and capable of doing what I am today. While Dr. Anderson got me started on this part, there are also some thank yous that are in order for the people who allowed us all to graduate today, the families who supported us through long nights of stress, classmates who have texted us at midnight to let us know what assignments are due the next day, and of course, the teachers, supervisors, coaches, and other staff that have allowed us to continuously push ourselves to be the best that we can be. Finally, I'd just like to clarify, while you may currently be watching me on a computer, there was very minimal chess playing involved in the writing of and giving of this speech. I don't think that I ever could have really realized how much Luther had to offer if I hadn't spent a year away from it. When I moved to Oregon in grade 10, I was met by a massive, closed-off community defined by a few isolated groups of friends. In fact, after spending a year there, I don't think I can really say that I got to know more than a few basketball players or people I shared classes to. So I was struck when, after driving 20 hours to get home, the first night back I hung out with the boys and it was probably the most fun I'd had all year. Then, once the school year started, I was reminded of what I missed. I was not only welcomed back, but realized how quickly I got to know virtually all of you. By leaving, I came to understand how amazing an environment we have here that not only welcomes each and every one of us without hesitation, but where we can get to know every high school student we've spent the last four years of our lives with and now finally are graduating with. A lot has happened over these last four years. Of course, we've had our fair share of accomplishments, ranging from some amazing theater productions to incredible musical numbers, athletic success, and of course, academic achievement. But while Luther helped many of us fulfill our passions, I don't think that's really what affected me the most. Instead, I remember going to my first dance in grade nine, where I stood scared in a corner of the room until an hour later I found myself in the middle of a mosh pit with people I'd barely spoken to the day before. I remember the crowd singing Country Roads after a fire alarm went off at, in the opening night of LIT, or saying it at parties or grade nine camping trips or anywhere else we could. I remember painting my face and yelling until I couldn't anymore at fun day, or screaming black gold black at the top of my lungs, as dumb as it is, because that's just what we did, even after Luther inevitably lost and we switched to whatever other out-of-town team we decided we wanted to win. What I remember are the experiences that took me from a boy who was terrified to speak in front of anyone because of what they might think of him, to someone who would do whatever dumb things the SRC asked him to consistently in front of the entire school at chapel. Many of you probably share these memories with me, and many of you probably don't. But I do believe that we can all find some times over the past four years where we started to feel not just un understood and appreciated, but in fact as an important feeling like we were an important part of this community, where we found our voices, our ability to be ourselves at school, with our friends, with our teachers, wherever it may be, knowing that we, will, we would be welcomed. While I may still be tall and Jewish, the rest of me has changed a lot thanks to Luther. And even if I might be a bit more disruptive in class now than I once was, the rest of the change has been for the better. Among all these memories, the last few months may be the most memorable, even, for, even if they're for the worst reasons. As we've been spending our days trying to wake up for Zoom classes, being forced to st stay home, we haven't been able to have the last few months of high school we all expected. In an instant, there were no more senior pranks, no more skip days, no more sitting in chapel laughing with our friends as we tried to pay attention. And as you guys watch this the day after I recorded it, we will have officially had no real in-person grad. As if that wasn't enough, the last few months have been marred with political turmoil, violence, and controversy. And the fact is, there's no easy answer to this. As much as I'd love to escape the negativity with some clever response that negates it all and replaces it with pure celebration, I can't. But what I can say is that while we may not be able to make up for what we have lost, we've been given a unique opportunity at the brink of a changing world. We have the strength to protest for change, fight for what we believe in, and contribute in person or virtually to whatever causes we'd like to. After all, we live in a world where a week ago, our generation tried to undermine a Trump presidential rally because a few TikTokers decided to reserve tickets. And it's the same strange, digital, united strength that will allow us to do whatever we can to support each other. 
and to replace the chances we've lost with what we can build. After all, even if this grad isn't in person, every one of us knows the effort that our classmates have put into making it here. And even if we aren't sitting here together and can't look over at our neighbors' faces, we're not any less connected to the people we've spent the last four years of our lives with. As we've fought through novel hardships, we've been granted new chances and ways to push ourselves forward. I know Ms. Wilkinson would never forgive me if I ended this speech by misinterpreting Robert Frost, so I'll try to avoid that. But what I will say is that whatever roads we choose and however much they will surely diverge, I know that every one of us is capable of choosing not only where that path will lead, but also what we will encounter along the way. I know that we have the chance to pick these paths because of the work we've put into making each other better. Day after day, whether we are in the same building or not, because that's what our community not only has meant, but will continue to mean. Thank you. No. No one's in doubt.
Hey, I see you heading to the kitchen. Get back here, I have something to say. I have a 45 minute speech full of wisdom advice for you. I want to start by saying I received the following email from a grad who shall remain nameless. Dr. A, I hear you usually begin your grad speech by addressing us as either punks or assorted delinquents. I'm wondering which one you're going to call us because I feel we're kind of both. Well, anonymous student, first I admire your honesty. But today is about dignity and decorum, if nothing else. I don't think this is the right time to be calling you unflattering names. Good morning, grade 12 brats. It's here. That day you've looked forward to for 12 years, and which I'm sure seemed vaguely theoretical for the longest time, has actually arrived. Today we joyfully honor this significant rite of passage, our public declaration that you are prepared to serve as ambassadors for the common good. Thus, it is by its very nature both a festive and solemn day. It's also a grad day unlike any others in our memory, so I'm sure that you're awash in competing emotions. Hopefully, at the very least, you feel a quiet pride in your tremendous accomplishments, despite the very trying circumstances since March. Perhaps you're also elated and excited at the prospect of officially completing this phase of your educational journeys, ready and free to embark on new pursuits. But grad day can also be a time of trepidation because the future can seem overwhelming or unclear. I would guess that some of you simply feel numb because it's all too surreal to process. Or perhaps this year, above all other years in your young lives, you feel dread or apprehension because you see with dismay a world in turmoil. Experiencing these intense divergent feelings is only human even on this normally auspicious occasion. So rest assured, sorting through these acute emotions is not an expression of weakness or defeat. In fact, it's anything but. Rather, this process is a healthy indicator that you're persevering and emerging as wiser and more resilient young adults. You've practiced patience and flexibility, chosen resolve rather than self-pity, and reinvented setbacks as opportunities. I have deeply admired your grit. However, none of this is to deny or demean the real losses that you have nonetheless experienced. For example, one of the unique features of Luther College is the rich community life, so critical to a well-rounded education. As we're all too aware, virtual learning was unable to fully emulate these authentic interactions and relationships. Despite everyone's best efforts, Zoom and Google simply could not comprehensively cover curriculum or provide for fully enacted co-curricular programs. The quintessentially human experiences of friendships and learning were reduced to long days at a two-dimensional screen, often while enduring new types of exhaustion and detachment. Therefore, I'm sure there were dark and difficult days especially as the media saturated our devices with stories of sickness, strife, inequity. You may even have thought, I guess Lord of the Flies is right. The island's on fire, power's in the wrong hands, and there's not much sight of rescue. But as challenging, as unusual as this year has seemed, these are actually far from unprecedented times. In fact, social unrest, global illnesses, and times of extensive personal suffering and loss have characterized the human story just as frequently as have times of abundance, peace, and joy. While we wish it were otherwise, COVID-19 and highly charged racial tensions are not just anomalies unjustly foisted on your generation. They, or versions of them, always have been and always will be integral to the totality of the human experience. Thus, I think the perspective we need today is that social upheaval, the kind of upheavals we've experienced in the last three months, are neither uncommon aberrations nor merely tangential to normal routine life. Rather, hardships are inherent to the human experience. While the COVID-19 virus itself might be new to us, its human impact is a timeless story. 
And there's an unexpected comfort in remembering we all belong to that story and in the knowledge that we, like countless generations before us, can prevail in the face of adversity. COVID-19 has not diminished you. It has deepened you. Almost a century ago, poet William Butler Yeats also brooded about a deeply troubled world, including an influenza pandemic and a world war. He says as much in one of his famous poems. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. I want to draw your attention this morning to that first line. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Yeats' central image is one of a gyre, or gyre as he would have called it, because he believed that history operates like a series of competing 2,000-year cycles. As a stable gyre spins, it widens out from an epicenter and then returns again. But if the spinning gyre widens too far or too fast, the center that keeps it functional cannot hold and the entire gyre collapses on itself. Yeats's contention was that each gyroscopic cycle in human history has a fixed center that mor morally stabilizes a society for centuries. But given what Yeats saw happening in the world around him, he came to wonder if that center could no longer hold, if society was literally spinning out of control. Perhaps today, we wonder the same. We might ask in the midst of a global pandemic, race riots, east-west tensions, widespread hunger and poverty, climate change. Can the center hold? This may seem like a rather bleak question for a joyous grad morning. I don't think it is. First, because our sheer survival depends on the answer. And secondly, because I believe the answer is yes, the center can hold. But that bold assertion compels us to engage the critical question, a question certainly worth asking as we reflect together on your 12 years of formal education. What will your center be? In years to come, what will you turn to with confidence when the gyre is spinning erratically? What will provide that immovable anchor, that still small voice, when life rages around you? Perhaps for some of you, the answer is the first great commandment, to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Or for some of you, it's love of family, or obedience to one's conscience. All good answers. But this morning, as you complete your last day ever of high school, last day ever of high school, I encourage you to consider two foundations that I humbly suggest are timeless and universal. Two centers that no matter your ethnicity, your religious beliefs, or your socioeconomic circumstances will hold the gyroscope of your life steady, even in life's most turbulent times. The first is why we're here today, education. A good education provides the tools required to cope with, learn from, and emerge from traumatic, uncontrollable events, events like COVID-19. One of those tools is wisdom, as you demonstrated by coming to understand that by enduring deprivations, you are transforming them into catalysts for new learning opportunities. Poet Mary Oliver points this out when she asks the rhetorical question, do you need a little darkness to get going? She is suggesting that despair and sorrow are inevitable, but one can and should choose to make them powerful motivators, because unless we are motivated to engage them as meaningful life lessons, they simply paralyze us with their meaninglessness. Embracing this choice means that when our comfortable blasé existence is threatened or denied, we learn to rediscover and fiercely defend that which matters most. We learn not to take for granted our innumerable blessings. We learn to properly reset our priorities, to live less frantic and distracted lives, to be grateful for what is rather than to be petulant about what is not. From this view, the very impositions that might have entirely ruined this graduating year have actually provided a truly memorable, uniquely common experience 
that has bound your class together unlike any other. Perhaps you've also learned much about the depth of your character as you've found ways to make the best of changes that you could not control. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Even as pandemic realities abbreviated your Luther experience, you nonetheless responded with goodwill, fortitude, and imagination, because you had learned that while apathy and self-pity might seem easier and enticing, they ultimately are cynical and empty. So the first center I offer you is education, because as John Dewey once argued, education is not preparation for life, it's life itself. Honoring and upholding formal education as we do by celebrating your graduation this morning is society's oath, if you will, that the best will not lack all conviction, that the center can and will hold against the forces that threaten to topple our social gyre. But there is a second center that transcends all that separates us, that has more power to combat the social ills we see around us today than hatred, paranoia, and pandemics do to divide and to defeat us. It is the calling to love our neighbors as ourselves, to live out with conviction the belief that each and every one of us has inherent dignity and equality, that each and every one of us is made in the image of our Creator. The second great commandment challenges us to act compassionately and empathetically for reasons simply beyond public praise or assuaging our own consciences. It means to sublimate selfish pursuits for the betterment of the public good. It is to seal upon our hearts the immutable truth that we belong to each other. This is the hope, the common ground of a world of 10,000 cultures. But as the discord and injustices around us bear witness to, it is a demanding call. Loving our neighbor in authentic and active ways is uncomfortable and it's arduous. To truly love one's neighbor is much less passive and much more intentionally sacrificial than mere tolerance, which actually demands very little of us. To love our neighbor demands words and actions. It demands, as Ms. Poltz put so well in her recent chapel, that we ask not what will happen to us if we dare to love, but what it will cost others if we don't. Loving our neighbor is risky, it's even dangerous, because it requires us to acknowledge and then set aside our fears, our prejudices, and our shallow indifference. But here is the hope. If we can do so, if we can love our neighbors, this is a center that not only will galvanize society in its darkest hours, but will infuse your lives with profound and lasting meaning. This center is the most potent, audacious antidote we have to all that plagues our global village. Graduates of 2020, you can cast your eyes forward with hope and confidence because you were tested but remained undaunted and because your education is already enabling you to be rooted centers for others. Therefore, this is not a lost year. It's a uniquely extraordinary year that afforded all of us the opportunity to be better versions of ourselves. We, the staff, the faculty, the alumni, and the administration extend heartfelt congratulations to you. Working alongside you has indeed been a pleasure. But now our reeling world badly needs ethically centered citizens such as you. So go, inspired by the challenging call to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with the God of infinite love who watches over you all your days. Congratulations and well done, Brats of 2020. Julianne Agunas.
Cooper Anderson. Eva Burkowska. Simran Brar. Jeanette Kai. Ryan Chan. Madison Chapman. Joshua John Cherry. Shima Tabiri. Krishno Das. Emma Chung Yander. Connor Dodds. Beatrice Grace Domingo. Yuanbo David Dong. Yuan André Dupré Magnon. Jonah James Eirich. Antonio Catalina Esparza Ariza. Veronica Exner. Fualifek Forche. Kai Friesen. Juliana Godreau. Jasnur Guliani. Cody Jared Ha. Edward Albert Hadhazi. Benjamin Hall Cunningham. Natalie Marilyn Ham. Luke James Hansen. Monica Lee Holubetz. Jeff Huang.
Rachel Desiree Ingram. Chinmay Jane. Aaron John Peter John Marcus Kirizopoulos Max Kupriva Nazar Kostyukov Eva Kuros Jace Kuffner Jonas Kumiliaskas Zachary Laird Mason Lakustiak Lydia Lee Avery Juliana Lightfoot Catherine Liu Frenzy Liu Maya Liu William Lowe to Lucy Lou Tong Lou Eden Mans Kelson Marple Christopher Matthews Ashante Mackenzie Missens Annabella Milne William Morgan Molly Morris Mays 
Isabel Hugo. Andrew Nickel. Ben Norton. Joel Obadina. Itunde Ogundibo. Timmy Oni. Naman Patel. Catherine Pearson. Hannah Elizabeth Phillips. Nicole Diamond Ponto. Jonathan Pop. Julia Mabel Rose Rakow. Akash Gupta Ramu Anisha Ragmi Amama Riaz Nathan Ritter. Tigart Rowell. Hassan Sabir. Byram Season Mu E Shi Navpreet Singh Ethan Soberg Joshua Lutzenheiser Seufer Aman Sokal Mika Sontag Tiffany Toluani Sotomi Emma Alexandra Spence Samir Srikant Ha 
Hudson Sunbow. Josie Sylvester. Federico Sestman Pintos. Eva Tiefenbach. Ivana Torben. Ethan Van Krynest. Hope Van Vliet. Jasmine Wang. Claire Wensley. Emily Wu. Stephanie Wu. Lucas Zhang. Jonathan Zhang. Mike Zong. Freya Zhu. Sherry Zhu. Eba Zia. Scholarships and Awards. The Ashley Anderson Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student who is recognized by both students and staff for their optimism, energy, caring, kindness, compassion, support for other students, and enthusiastic involvement in school life. They must be in good academic standing and active in a number of school activities, ideally including at least one sport. Recipient, Avery Lightfoot. The Gladys Christie Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student who has excelled in French and intends to study the language at a post-secondary institution. Recipient, Avery Lightfoot. The Gladys Hubick Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student intending to study in the field of education. Recipient, Avery Lightfoot. The Edith Rass Choral Leadership Award is awarded to a student who displays outstanding leadership and who shows potential as a future choral director. Recipient, Avery Lightfoot. The Philip Asman Memorial Award is awarded to a student who will take their first year of studies at Luther College at the University of Regina or a church college. Recipient, Katherine Pearson. The Dr. Richard Hordern and Nancy Talsneys Hordern Award 
is awarded to a student who will be attending Luther College at the University of Regina and who has demonstrated exceptional leadership and made strong contributions to the lives of the college through co-curricular and community activities. Recipient, Katherine Pearson. The Lloyd Barber Family Scholar Athlete Award Female is awarded to a female student who excels in sports and academics and displays strong leadership qualities. Recipient, Natalie Hamm. The Lloyd Barber Family Scholar Athlete Award Male is awarded to a male student who excels in sports and academics and displays strong leadership qualities. Recipient, Benjamin Paul Cunningham. The Beryl and Douglas Chalmers Memorial Award is awarded to a student who is planning a career in human rights, international development, environmental protection, journalism, justice, law, politics, or a similar field. Recipient, Veronica Exner. The Liefeld Scholarship in Music is awarded to a student with a minimum 70% average and a proficiency in music. Recipient, Veronica Exner. The Fred Wagner Scholarship is awarded to an outstanding student with preference given to one who is proficient in English with a special interest in drama. Recipient, Veronica Exner. The Violetta and Fred Chalmers Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student showing a positive work ethic and academic improvement. Recipient, to Lucy Liu. The John Chomey Scholarships is awarded to students who exemplify courage, tenacity, perseverance, teamwork, and leadership in athletic endeavors and demonstrate a positive attitude toward academic performance. Recipients, Ashante mckenzie Missons and Jonah Eirich. The English Amoriti Scholarship is awarded to a student who has excelled in grades 10, 11, and 12 English classes. Recipient, Jasnora Guliani. The International Baccalaureate Award is given to an outstanding International Baccalaureate student. Recipient, Jasmer Guliani. The Ellis Weston Scholarship is awarded to a graduating student who excels in history and social studies. Recipient, Jasmer Guliani. The Elaine Engel Memorial Bursary is awarded to an energetic and caring student on acceptance into a nursing program. Recipient, Eva Kouros. The Jennifer Faro Affeld Memorial Music Performance Award is awarded to an outstanding female singer who is a member of the Luther College Choir. Recipient, Catherine Liu. The Kathy Feldstrom Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student who demonstrates academic achievement and exemplary character. Recipient, Josie Sylvester. The Lydia and Otto Furman Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student in good academic standing with demonstrated or potential leadership ability. Recipient, Ben Norton. The Heart for Service Scholarship is awarded to a student entering a career of Christian service to others. Recipient, Ava Tiefenbach. The Liefeld Scholarship in Science is awarded to a student with a minimum 80% average and a proficiency in science. Recipient, Mike Song. The Lawrence H. Mang German Scholarship is awarded to a student who intends to continue Germanic studies. Recipient, Maria Mugo. The McIlrick Family Recognition of Resilience and Personal Achievement Award is awarded to a student who has persevered and successfully adapted to adversity and will pursue academic or vocational goals. The award is a celebration of determination and strength of character. Recipient, Anisha Regmi. The McIlrick Family Service to Society Award recognizes a student who makes a difference in our society through their volunteer activities. Recipient, recipient Tiffany Toluwani Sotomi. The Jim Morton Memorial Scholarships is awarded to female and male resident students who demonstrate academic achievement and exemplary character. Recipients, Jeanette Kai and Hai Lam Chan. The Michael and Christine Schemmer Memorial Bursary is awarded to a resident student who has participated in the choral program. Recipient, Hai Lam Chan.
The Jeremy Nelson Memorial Graduate Scholarship is awarded to a student who is entering a post-secondary institution and is planning to pursue a degree in history or political science. Recipient, Joshua Utzenheiser Seufer. The Cecile and Robert Stark Scholarships is awarded to a student who attended Lutheran both grades 11 and 12 and who combines high scholastic achievement in mathematics with exemplary co-curricular commitment. Recipient, Joshua Lutzenheiser Seufer. The Richard Nosbach Memorial Art Award honors a gifted student in any grade who demonstrates unique talent, temperament, ability, and perseverance in the making of art. Recipient, Jonathan Zhang. The Henrik Ophim Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student whose character, academic record, and musical ability have enriched the musical life of Luther College. Recipient, Samir Srikant. The Noreen Peacock in Remembrance Award in Athletics is awarded to the best male or female athlete who is in good academic standing. Recipient, Emma Alexandra Spence. The Dorothy Sauer Memorial Award is awarded to a female student who is proficient in English and fine arts. Recipient, Man Ka Lydia Lee. The Herman Sattler Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a graduate with a minimum 80% average who attended Luther College in grade 11 and 12. Preference is given to students who are involved in co-curricular activities. The recipient must emulate and exemplify compassion, consideration of others, kindness, thoughtfulness, leadership, and who supports and encourages others. Recipient, Peter Jung. The Cornelia Tasha Grauppi Scholarship in German is awarded to a student showing the greatest promise in German and planning to continue the study of the language. Recipient, Hiba Zia. The Dr. Franklin E. Scribner and Margaret H. Scribner Memorial Prize is awarded to a student showing a high degree of proficiency in biology. Recipient, Hiba Zia. The Henry O. Timnick Award is awarded for musical excellence. Recipient, Mika Sontag. The Winifred and Donald Voigt's bursary is awarded to a student who has made a positive Christian contribution to the life at Luther College. Recipient, Joel Obadina. The Ann A. Whitmore Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student who maintains an average of at least 80% displays an interest and ability in English literature, is an active participant in the theatrical or literary activities of Luther College and exhibits genuine concern and care for other students. Recipient, Jasmine Wang. The Witchrock Farley Scholarship is awarded to a student who intends to enter a health science field. Recipient, Aaron Jong. The Engenband Scholarship for Graduating Students is awarded to a student who has been actively involved in the band program and demonstrates a high level of proficiency on their instrument. Recipient, Hope Van Vliet. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada Student Bursary is awarded to a student who is active in the ELCIC or partner churches and has an interest in studying for leadership in the church. Recipient, Joshua John Cherian. Luther College at the University of Regina High School Partnership Program is awarded to students registered through Luther College at the University of Regina in Arts, Fine Arts, Science, or Pre-Professional Studies for the fall semester. Recipients, Jonas Kumulioskis, Ben Norton, and Hannah Phillips. Our closing exercises culminate each year by honoring two students who have distinguished themselves in remarkable ways. I first want to congratulate and express gratitude to SRC President, Mr. Ben Norton, who provided exceptionally strong leadership through uncharted COVID restrictions. He chose to enthusiastically and creatively accomplish what was possible rather than to be defeated by what was denied. Our very own John Krasinski buoyed us with his regular installments of Luther's version of Some Good News, and he strove to serve our community before himself. We thank you, Ben. Well done, El Presidente. 
And I'm also happy to report that he surprisingly passed all his classes and therefore will not be returning this fall. Now, in keeping with one of our time-honored academic traditions, we close the 2020 graduation ceremony with the presentation of the principal's gold medal, Luther College's highest academic award, because it recognizes that student who has superbly embodied the ideals of a Luther College education. For this reason, even though it is called the principal's gold medal, the faculty collaboratively determine the recipient. The criteria state, the principal's gold medal recognizes the student who shows the greatest general proficiency in academics and co-curricular activities over the course of his or her four years at Luther College. Therefore, the medal is a symbol of both quality education in a Christian context and this student's exceptional achievements within that educational mission. Undoubtedly, this year's recipient has shone academically, achieving a graduating average of 93.7 and excelling as an IB diploma student. Not surprisingly, he or she achieved high honors all four years and has been awarded multiple scholarships. Obviously, this individual is intelligent, academically versatile, self-disciplined, and equally adept as both a critical and creative thinker. Not only, not only did this year's recipient place third in a national essay contest, but also was named a University of Toronto Arbor Scholarship winner. Complementing the student's academic prowess were the varied and highly accomplished contributions to uh, school life. The list is impressive. In addition to athletic pursuits like cross country and diligent work on both the LIT Entertainment Committee and the musical's lighting and sound crew, our recipient was a provincial caliber debater and very active with SRC initiatives, such as the Luther Good News series, the All College Awards, and all that jazz. Not sure who we're talking about yet. Most importantly, our principal's gold winner was respected by students and faculty alike for his compassion, his humility, and his goodwill. In a letter he penned to the school newspaper, The Tatler, only two weeks into the COVID pandemic, he had this to say, about the personal opportunities he discovered during his isolation. I have taken this time to reflect on ways I can improve to become a more compassionate and caring member of society. I, by contrast, sat at home and found time to eat more. He, I guess we can say he now, exhibited an unrelenting drive for excellence, which emanated from his deep-seated confidence in the benefits and responsibilities of engaging in a well-rounded education. For these reasons and many more, this student has not only enriched our community, but stands poised as the kind of principled and fully prepared citizen our global community so urgently needs. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the faculty and administration of Luther College in congratulating a young man who truly does embody all that is best about a Luther College education the 2020 Principal's Gold recipient, Mr. Jasner Guliani. First, a blessing for the graduates. May God, who began this good work in you, carry it through to completion, enabling you to use your talents to the fullest. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and to be faithful to your commitments, always confident in the support of those who love you. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you will reach out your hand to comfort them and change their pain into joy. God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in the world. 
so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. May your integrity be a gift to the world. And may the Spirit of God be with you always. And then a benediction for all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.